there are a lot of things that are scary about Halloween. For example, that there are some people out there that don't like candy corn or sewer clowns or the fact that there's a bunch of kids out there who think they have a right to my candy. And then, of course, this. <laughs> Hey, heads up, this video kinda unavoidably has to show some uncomfortable images of people participating in blackface. Please, please watch at your own risk. Okay, on with the show. Blackface shows its horrible... Uh, face? Just about every Halloween. In fact, surprisingly, a third of you out there think blackface is acceptable at least... sometimes? Sometimes? And I'm sure this year, a year full of blackface scandals will be no exception. Call to resign the list growing over a racist photo from his medical school yearbook. Yearbook obtained by CBS News appear to show students wearing blackface. Gucci's fashion forward top getting more complaints than compliments. Critics on social media slamming this $890 black turtleneck with a red cutout for the mouth. The Trudeau one is bad. It's certainly disturbing he's donned blackface or brownface at least three times, and it's disturbing to witness a lot of his supporters rush to his defense. And I, I kind of get it. Canada is in the middle of an important election cycle. The next closest contender is a racist. But isn't this also really racist? Anyway, Andrew Scheer, the Conservative Party's candidate, has also said he'll fast-track pipeline construction, so it's hard to pick him over... But wait, isn't Trudeau also pro-pipeline? Fuck! Fuck! <sighs> I am not qualified to discuss Canadian politics or complicated personal responsibility of voting for the lesser of two evils. <sighs> okay, let's start over. Trudeau was marketed as the millennial candidate, even though he himself is Gen X. And yes, I know Trudeau is Canadian, but he's also quite loved in the US, and Canada also has a very weird and long history with blackface. Trudeau was cool, funny, and apparently woke AF, spoke out against our own racist leader's anti-immigration rhetoric, and made climate change central to his campaign. However, this underscores something that kind of goes unacknowledged about millennials. They are not as woke as you think they are. Sure, as a whole, millennials are more progressive, but that's mostly because 40% of millennials are people of color. The trouble starts once you separate by race. In 2018, a survey found the percentage of young white Americans who self-report having interracial friendships is nearly the same percentage of older whites. Also in 2018, voters between the ages of 18 and 24 were even more conservative than white voters in their late 20s and early 30s. In 2016, Donald Trump won white Americans between 18 and 24 by 5 percent. And in fact, Barack Obama is the only Democratic candidate to win young white voters in the last 15 years. And actually, Barack Obama is crucially important to my point here. Even those white people who are voting Democrat and think they're really progressive are still beholden to racist ideas. As Tim Wise, a prolific anti-racist writer, and others have covered extensively, the election of Barack Obama basically enabled every white person to claim we were post-race. By electing a black president, the claim was that race no longer mattered in America. And this led to a rise in what Tim Wise has called racism 2.0. Or what I like to call a black man became president, so that means black people can be anything they want now and the lingering effects of slavery and Jim Crow are gone forever and the fact that schools are more segregated than ever is individual families' faults for not working harder and not because housing segregation was ever a thing. Though, I do think the name 2.0 is misleading because this brand of racism has existed forever. The catch-22 of colorblind racism is that it enables someone with racist opinions to claim someone calling them out for said racism is in fact racist for bringing up race. It's how Donald Trump accuses reporters or other politicians of being racist when they point out he's being racist. As emboldening white nationalists, now people are also saying that say the president... It's such a racist there question. Some when he himself took out ads against the Central Park Five, uses xenophobic language to talk about immigrants, and fucking won't shut up about our first president of color's birth certificate. Here's my question. I asked you last time, I said, and people, some people were shocked, if you were racist, you knew why I was asking you that. Are you racist? I am the least racist person that you have ever met. I am the least racist person. <laughs> Thank you.
the idea is we are beyond race, so why are you bringing it up? If race didn't matter, black people wouldn't make up 33% of the prison population when black Americans only represent 12% of the total American population. Or black women and Native American women wouldn't die of pregnancy-related causes at a rate three times higher than white women. Colorblind racism also pops up in the belief that we are closer to racial equality than we actually are. I feel like this was no more exemplified than in the card game Cards Against Humanity. As you can see, I was, like just about every college student in 2012, really into Cards Against Humanity. I collected the expansion packs, including some obscure ones about video games, and then bought the bigger blacker box, which came with a secret card, The Biggest Blackest Dick, and I think I've already made my point here. I think Cards Against Humanity could only have been born in that cultural moment of electing our first black president. The game's whole premise revolves around saying offensive things in a safe space. The thrill is knowing you're not allowed or supposed to say such things. It's about transgressing or regressing our PC norms for an hour or two within a group of people who hopefully know you personally don't think this and don't think these things themselves. Look, this isn't to say the makers of Ka are bad people. Far from it. They are always doing some wildly cool charity thing that also functions as a good PR move. But literally, selling shit to donate money to Heifer International also allows you, the Ka player, you, the owner of the Bigger Blacker Box, to comfort yourself. I'm not a bad person. This isn't a bad game because the makers of the game are really nice and good and woke. But I do think it's telling I never played Ka in a super diverse group. And I also don't think you wear blackface to a multiracial party. These are not racist kids. But after the picture was snapped, text appeared reading Wakanda Forever. A reference to the movie Black Panther. This concept is called white solidarity, where white people in private and small groups allow for racial transgression. In private, you might say the N-word when singing along when you normally wouldn't. Or you might tell that one racist joke you know to your other white friends. Yeah, whispering, that's one way you know white people are about to be racist. <laughs> A lot of clues. I know all of them. One of my favorites is when someone is talking to you and then they stop and do this thing. <laughs> the over-the-shoulder minority check. Basically, what I'm saying is, left alone, white people get up to some shady racist shit. Posts in question contain discriminatory opinions. If our country was all Caucasian, the homicide rate would drop 70%. Perhaps we should be very suspicious of all Muslims in this country, said another. Or encourage violence. It's a good day for a chokehold. They were collected by the Plain View Project, a group of lawyers and activists who over two years painstakingly reviewed the Facebook pages of 3,500 current and former police officers. And you have to ask yourself, what is the appeal? Why do people get off on dabbling with racism? Eric Lott, a cultural historian and professor at CUNY, is one of the leading voices in the study of cultural appropriation. Cultural appropriation is when a dominant culture adopts elements of another culture. White people wearing Native American headdresses is an example, as is Bo Derek's dreadlocks, and of course, fucking blackface. But those are really obvious examples, and white appropriation of black culture is everywhere. It's saggy pants on white men. It's the idea that Miley Cyrus invented twerking, but she didn't. As Lot writes, every time you hear an expansive white man drop into his version of black English, you are in the presence of blackface's unconscious return. And indeed, many slang terms enjoyed now by young white folks originated in black communities. Bay began on black Twitter in 2013. Turn Up first appeared in the 2010 song All The Way Turned Up by the Atlanta rap group Travis Porter. And surprise, surprise, dope switched from referring to a stupid person to cool thanks to rapper Chief Rocker Busy B in 1981. African American Vernacular English, or AAVE, is the fancy official way of referring to the casual informal speech patterns of black English. AAVE actually has incredibly complicated grammatical features that follow a pretty hard set of rules such as the invariant habitual B, which refers to hypothetical habitual situations like when I be driving instead of when I'm driving. Or the zero copula, which omits the verbs is or are, like 
Jake cool instead of Jake is cool. I say all of this because the internet is pretty obsessed with African American vernacular English. Hide your kids, hide your wife. Ain't nobody got time for that. And in 2018, a study in the Journal of English Linguistics found most new or emerging words on Twitter originate from black Twitter. I mean, basically, black Americans are driving the internet. Can you even imagine the internet without this? I'm semi, I say automatic. Money add and multiply. I call it mathematics. Or this? No! Ah! Stop! I could have dropped my croissant! <laughs> or this? Back at it again at Krispy Kreme. But in the real world, the use of AAVE has consequences. Language discrimination is a real thing. The use of non-standard English by black children can result in implicit bias from teachers as early as preschool as a 2016 Yale study found. In fact, in 2016, linguistics John R. Rickford and Sharice King argued George Zimmerman's acquittal for killing Trayvon Martin was granted in part because of linguistic discrimination. Jurors described the star witness, Rachel Gentel, as, quote, hard to understand and, quote, not credible because simply she spoke in AAVE. You said that it could have been, for all you know, Trayvon Martin smashing George Zimmerman in the face is what you actually heard. What? Yeah, just earlier today. By who? By you. And you ain't getting that from me. And then basically Fox News made fun of her. And she comes across as brutally ignorant. Oh, and the daughter of the defense attorney Don West posted this on Instagram. And to be honest, even though I'm currently making a video on fucking blackface, this might be the most white supremacist thing I've ever seen. Like... What the fuck is up with the vanilla ice cream cones? You know that was intentional. That is some fucked up microaggressive shit right there. Anyway, what I'm saying is what white America takes from black America is exactly the title of critic Greg Tate's collection, Everything But the Burden. White American culture takes everything from black American culture but the prejudice in the discrimination. That's the answer to my question earlier. What do white people get from cultural appropriation? White people get to borrow the fun slang words and the great music, but it also reinforces white supremacy because basically what this shit really says is, I get to wash it off. Eric Lott, in his more recent book, Black Mirror, analyzes the lingering presence of blackface in cultural appropriation today. He also notes the return of blackface in the wake of Obama's election. John Hamm did so on 30 Rock. Where are you, my brother? Here I am, Alvy! Frank Caliendo of Fox NFL Sundays did it. I was just terrible. Their defense offended me. That's how bad it was. It was crazy. Robert Downey Jr. did it in Tropical Thunder. I know who I am! I'm a dude playing a dude disguised as another dude. Billy Crystal opened the 2012 Academy Awards with the return of his Sammy Davis Jr. impression. Of note, 2012 was also the year The Help was nominated for Best Picture. It thankfully didn't win. The Help was written by a white lady and directed by a white dude. And now all those white moms quoting Viola Davis's lines in that movie seem kind of weird, right? Oh, and Viola Davis now regrets making The Help because it was more about the white characters than the black maids. Anyway, where was I? Oh, right. This really awkward correspondence dinner video created by Steven Spielberg in 2013. Picking the right actor to play Obama, that was the challenge. He is someone who could dive in and really become Barack Obama. And as it turns out, the answer was right in front of me all along. Daniel Day-Lewis. Was it hard playing Obama? I'll be honest, yeah, it was. This accent took a while. The cosmetics were challenging. I mean, you wouldn't believe how long it takes to put these ears on in the morning. I still honestly cannot believe this exists. What all of these blackface performances have in common is this idea of ironic distance. That somehow, because we elected a black president, we could now return to our racist past with the ironic knowledge that we know better, that we know this is wrong. Ha <laughs> ha! But it leaves a sour taste in my mouth that nearly a hundred years after Woodrow Wilson watched Birth of a Nation in the White House, the cinema of blackface returned to the White House.
Birth of a Nation is basically responsible for the return of the KKK and features incredibly racist portrayals of African Americans who were, of course, duh, played by white actors in blackface. The main plot of the film details the KKK hunting down a black man after his attempted assault of a white woman. The characterization of the black character as sexually aggressive has its roots in blackface minstrelsy, as one of the most common characters was that of the Mandingo, a disgusting idea that associated black men as bestial and oversexed. And the use of that term in cuckold and interracial porn indicates that that racist caricature lingers on. I gotta see Shaq's penis. <laughs> so. <laughs> Those are balls. It's a big, a big black dick. It's a drawing. Black. It's a big black dick. It's a, it's a, a big, big black cock. <gasps> black cock down. Which brings us back to Cards Against Humanity and its supposedly ironic bigger, blacker box and secret card. The effects and legacy of blackface are all around us. In the cartoons we love. Hmm. Do you ever wonder why we're always like, wearing gloves? Uh, duh, it's because blackface performers wore them. It's also in the classic songs we all know how to hum. Buffalo gals, won't you come out tonight? Come out tonight. Come out tonight. I came from Alabama with a banjo on my knee. Even the fucking ice cream truck song is an instrumental version of an extremely racist song I refuse to play on this channel. But it's also and mostly in the history of white folks stealing black creations. Elvis might have popularized rock and roll, but his sound and moves were taken directly from black performers, as were many of his songs. You ain't nothing but a You ain't nothing but a The same goes for hip hop and rap. Yes, I'm looking at you Eminem, Macklemore, and NF. Like you never seen a white person before. Sometimes, when I start getting too angry over these musical appropriations, I remind myself a recording of Chuck Berry's Johnny B. Good is hurtling through space on Voyager 1. And if Tom DeLonge is right, and there are aliens out there, they'll hear the true king of rock and roll first. And then I remember this happened, and I get a little bummed out again. But finally, the ghost of blackface exists here. I stopped playing Cards Against Humanity years ago, but don't be fooled. I was nearly its greatest champion for years. The fact that I own the bigger, blacker box should be proof enough of that. I defended it to my mom, who pointed out all the things I just got done saying. I took it to every party. I wrote my own shitty cards. I fancied myself quite the clever player. Fuck! I even have special printed cards with my fucking name on them. But the idea that we are far enough past our racist history to once again make these jokes, I like to think, came to an end when this happened. Donald J. Trump will become the 45th president of the United States. I think when the leader of the KKK endorses a president and then that candidate still gets elected, we are still very, very far away from a post-racial world. And I don't think we'll ever get there. And I don't think that we should. The trick about colorblind racism or claims about post-race is that it will always lead to things like language discrimination. As somebody who grew up in a very diverse background as a young boy in the projects, I didn't see color as a young boy, and I honestly don't see color now. Race should always matter, but it's never going to be something we, and I do mean you, my fellow white people, should be able to make fun of, and it's never going to be something we should steal from. I wasn't sure how to end this, but this weekend I saw this mural in downtown Toledo, so we're ending it here. Appropriately, this mural is located on Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard. The artist Mario Torrio, I hope I pronounced that right, titled the work, Still Dreaming. The beautiful simplicity of King's dream in this mural will always be that people should not be treated poorly on the basis of their skin, nor for their tendency to leave out a B-verb. 
Thank you so much for watching. I've been wanting to make a video about this stuff for a long time, and after the revelations about Trudeau, it felt like the right time. We have several really cool Halloween-themed videos this month, but we thought, why not start it with a really serious and complicated one? Happy Halloween! So if you want to see those when they're uploaded, hit that subscribe button and little bell button. Plus, we're going to dress up our pets for Halloween, and you'll only get to see that excellent content on our social media. Hint, 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 wink, wink, wink. Bye! See you next week!